You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So, sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. It's chaos in this room. Too many people. We have, of course, Mark Nikolai, who contributes to half the chaos all the time. We have Zachary Nikolai. Uh-oh, what happened? Nothing, he's just taking a while. Do I need to? Do I need to do it? I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Zachary yeah. Nikolai, who has been on my good side recently. Thank you for everything you do, Zach. And our special guest, Mike Palmer from Cigar Hustler. Hey, Paustani, BDP. We're gonna get more into exactly who this guy is. You may recognize him from somewhere else on the <laughs> internet, but uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for oh, coming. Oh, please. I'm glad I could finally work it out. Absolutely. So we've got a lot to go over. Uh, first of all, for those of you who don't know, Cigar Hustler is a cigar shop and lounge that's been around for a very long time, over 10 years, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, like the, br- the brand post on has been around 10, but the shop, I think it's like 15, 16 years. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. So they're in Deltona, Florida. That's one of the places that we hit up. Official uh, basis cigar retailer as well. Definitely a cool spot to check out but we're gonna talk about how you specifically got involved with cigar hustler so what's your story with that well uh it goes back it's like long long time ago um i used to live here in lake mary uh right actually the other side of the road over there and i was uh you know the other place like you guys go to because it was so close but we we moved across the bridge right basically because my wife changed uh counties she works with the school system so I started going in there, and I was working from home at the time, so I was in there one day, and then I'd go two days, and then three days. <laughs> and before you know it, I'm there four or five days a week, and my day, because I deal with China, starts a lot earlier than 10 o'clock. So then they go, well, we'll just give you a key. You come in, you know, sit at the table, do what you ever need to do, and then we'll show up at 10 o'clock and open the shop up. So then, then that happened for a while, and then they went to Nicaragua, and they were short-staffed at the time, because Greg and Mike had to work shifts way back then. Hmm. So they were like, well, we don't know what to do. So I just raised my hand and go, I already have a key. Show me how to run the register. You know, then the morning shift's taken care of. So and then it just took off from there. Hmm. And that was how long ago? Oh, geez. That's got to be nine years ago. They had just started the brand. Post-tiny. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Very the nice. brand was already established. So were you like a cigar smoker before that? Or uh, was well, I've been smoking like- cigars since I was 18 years old, oh, on, okay. on and yeah. off. Uh, yeah. When I married my, I've been married three times. When I married my current wife, she bought me my first humidor and my first, I guess, pack of cigars. You would say, yeah. And then I just started getting into it more and more. Would you say that you were a, or generally speaking, are you right. more of a medium, full body, mild guy, I'm all over the place? Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you know, yeah. reps come in like you guys. You bring stuff in. You want to try it. You want to try something new. So yeah, I'm all over the place. I guess when you're when you're working in the industry, you definitely have to be able to tolerate. Right, you have to All do everything. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Very nice. So, started working there. Did you get involved with the well, brand just, right away? It was just helping out in the beginning. Yeah. It wasn't even like a regular shift. Okay. And then uh, as it got, I got closer to the brothers, uh, and then I started picking up shift, and then there was a short time where just me and Chet Atwell were the only two guys that worked there. A bunch mm-hmm. of people quit or got fired or something, and then and it was just chaos for about two months, maybe? Yeah. I mean, I open check closed. I open check closed. I mean, that's all there was. And then Mike and Greg filled in in the middle sometimes. And we're older guys. Chet's about my age. We're like, look, you guys got to hire somebody. We can't. We can't do this on our feet. Yeah. You know, eight yeah. to nine hours a day, every single day. Do, do you still have your other job also? Yeah. Yeah. But that's a, it's supposed, I, what I do is I source stuff in China for U.S. US and Canadian companies. So, like, if you wanted this ashtray made, I'd find you a factory. Mm. Mm. And then depending on the size of your business, I either have it delivered to the dock out behind the factory or I can have it delivered all the way to your house if you want it that way. Then I have my own QC people I put in the factory. So when you order that, that's what you get. Gotcha. 
It's a cool gig. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a lot busier years ago. The internet sort of put a, you know, a mash on the business, and uh, COVID just about killed me. So, Timu. Yeah. Timu, yeah. Yeah, Timu, <laughs> Sheen, Alibaba. Alibaba. Yeah, that was right. a big one. Still is. Still is. Yeah, still is. So the cigars was kind of a passion thing. Yeah. At well, first. I mean, it still I, is, obviously. I started the, um, an online club on, on Facebook called the Florida Cigar Club. Mm. And I started that because, like I said, my wife was a school teacher, and she would, and since I worked from home, she'd come home in the afternoon, and I haven't talked to a person all day long. I'm yeah. emails all day long, emails and things. So she'd come home, I'd go, I'm not, I just want to talk, just want to talk. And she comes home, she just, she doesn't want to talk. Yeah. She's already talked for nine hours. She doesn't want to talk to anybody else. She goes, look, you've got to find a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to find something to do. You're like, okay. I'm like, oh, well, I like cigars. So I spun off my group off a bigger group so I could meet people. Because most of those online groups are, you know, they're huge. Yeah. But you never meet anybody because you become friends with some guy who lives in Connecticut or some guy who lives in California. So my group is only Florida. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's the way it started. And that's actually my first trip into Hustler. We went in there because they were past, they were going to give us a bunch of stickers for somebody in the club or something. Oh, okay. So we went in there to get Cigar Hustler stickers. How I met Mikey the very first time. Gotcha. Yeah. And then real quick before we sure. keep talking, what are we smoking right we now? We are smoking the B- oh, I just asked myself. Uh, the BDP cigar. It came out about two years ago. Uh, Cordoba Morales makes it for me. I blended it with Z, the owner of the company. And Very then nice. it's distributed by Postania. It's carried in maybe 20 or 30 different shops across the country. Nice. Very nice. So BDP, obviously, big damn... P- what does it stand for? <laughs> big, di- big Dick Palmer. <laughs> oh, actually. <yeah. laughs> big Dick Palmer. Oh, there was close. close. Yes. <laughs> You're That's funny. Close. Yeah. Um, it's a nickname Skip Martin gave me. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> I was uh, I was over at CI in Tampa with Mike Rosales and, and Mike Stepankiewicz from the sh- from shop, and we were all sitting outside because Rosales had a meeting there or something, and then this guy drives up, and he almost parked, like not in the parking lot, but like on the other side of the hedge. He comes running over and shook my hand. He was in my Florida Cigar Club, and he never met me, but it, it was a big deal to the man, apparently. So he's shaking my hand, telling me what he's smoking, where he's going, what he's doing this weekend. I introduce him to Rosales and Mike. This is Mike Rosales from uh, from Roma Craft Tobacco. It's Mike Stepan Kevich from Postania Cigars. And the guy goes, yeah, hi, okay. And then turns and starts <laughs> talking to me again. So after about five, ten minutes, the guy find, you know, goes back, jumps the hedge, gets in his car and drives away. And Rosales looks at Mike and he goes, Palmer just big dicked us. <laughs> so Skip heard the story and then he goes, well, now he's big dick Palmer then all the time. So That's funny. That's, that's awesome. where it came from, yeah. Now there are uh, there's dicks hidden in the band. You're there's lying. about there's about nine you're, of them. You're lying. Nope. There's nine of them. I had it designed specially that way. You really just put nine dicks in our mouth. There, that. <laughs> <laughs> that is the slight problem with the name. Some guys are a little like, oh, no, I'm putting your dick in my mouth. Like, well, it's not really my dick. And it's is there one like in the front on the crown, like right at the top? Is That's that what, what I was thinking. Sh- I should have brought in my glasses. But yeah, there's one right straight up in the middle in the front. Okay, that makes sense. Wow. Okay. If you He's look at the band itself, me. it's two of them. It cuts in the middle. Uh, if you look at the end, the ri- I don't know if they, uh, on the drawing, there's a little notch at the end, like the little pee hole at the end of the band. <laughs> I legit had no idea. I'm like, because I've had this before. Oh, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, <laughs> this is funny. a nice, classy cigar. Like, the band looks great. <laughs> I like the color. In the middle here, there's two of them here back to back, too. Gotcha. That makes that makes sense. Right. Now, now that you see them, you're like, oh, yeah, there they are. Now is the last time I'm smoking it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the only problem with the cigar. Some guys are hung up on the name. What about the, uh, the blend? Uh, it's a Bano wrapper. Uh, other than that, it's uh, all undisclosed. Mm. It's tobacco from the island of Nauru in the Micronesian Islands. Okay. That's the story. Out by Australia? <laughs> yes. Wow. Very nice. Very small island. They only grow tobacco. That's all they have room for. <laughs> the giant uh, tobacco field. Very good. I'd say it's uh, medium. Medium. Medium-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's medium, yeah. It's not full. It's not light. It's medium. Very good flavor. And then you guys, Cigar Hustler. Yes have a podcast as well and that's you and other uh, mike yeah the other mike mike stepankevich and uh phil our engineer right we have our engineer you're right yeah. when did you when did the podcast start i know it's been a uh few years six or seven years now oh wow uh no. mikey came to me one day and he goes you know we should do a podcast i'm like do you know how he goes no you figure it out I'm like, great <laughs> So, yeah, so it's been around six years now. That's we need how microphones starts. and we need cameras. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what we do with Alex. Right. We, st- <laughs> uh, yeah, we started out with one of those snowball 
round things. Oh yeah, and a little table in the like back. Like the three sixty. Yeah, oh, oh, the it's, snowball uh, it's microphone or the snowball microphone. Yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, like yeah. a conference mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's terrible. It yeah. was terrible. We're all huddling around it. You know, if we have a guest on the show, it was it was terrible. That's basically what Jared did. He's like, you guys should start a podcast. And he's like, I don't even want to be on it. And then he quickly changed his mind about that. Ah. And then I got put in charge of creating the podcast and making it well, what it is. Well, in all fairness, you had a podcast already. That is true. Oh, did you? I what did have it? some practice. It was the Gonzo Tonight Show. So oh. it was more current events and politics related. Gotcha. Zach was on a few yeah, times. Majority of the times. <laughs> I was like the designated guest. <laughs> I might you as gotta well have one. You got to have somebody. Yeah. Yeah. For those days where nobody shows up. So I had my practice and then I had, um, I had like, you know, the ideas and stuff, but I couldn't quite figure out how to do certain stuff. Like right. when it comes to like the cameras or whatever. Right. So now that we started this one, I'm like, okay, we got to get serious about it. So we did a lot of trial and error, you know, and now it's. Yeah. You're always upgrading equipment. Always. Always. always yeah. Upgrading. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at first it was, the, it was we like. We bought the best one we have. Well, that was last month. Now there's yeah. something better. So at first it was like one camera with all four of us. Yeah. And then we quickly we were like, we got to get two cameras. And we had the SLR camera, so it only go for 30 minutes at a time. That, yeah. That's what we were using yeah, too. We yeah. Yeah. With, with a one yeah. hour show, you're making your own commercials and yeah. throwing it in the middle. Yeah. Right. So we get up, change it. Yeah. But yeah, now we're, now we're using iPhones, like you said. So that is hey, the works best out option great for us. That's yeah. great. They'll never die. They're always charging. Right. Mm-hmm. Very portable too. Yeah, that's the problem with mm-hmm. our gear. It's not very portable. So do you have you ever done a podcast outside the studio or are you just uh, doing they did one, they went down to smoke on the water, mm. but I couldn't go. So when the guy that runs everything can't go, it didn't it didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. sounded like shit and the video didn't work. <laughs> which is which I was happy about. So you know. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the day where for some reason I can't make it. And these guys still want to do a podcast. I want to see how that turns I out. I think we thought about doing that once when you were in. We like, did. Uh, yeah. yeah when when you were in Iceland, I think. Um, yeah. We we're like, let's just go to his house and just I was start say, filming. Yeah, we just break into his house to yeah. do this. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, just like you had a key access. for cigar hustlers. Oh, yeah, I got a key, key here. For the house. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I say so I could watch his house, but, you know, it's to steal right. his coffee, to be right. honest with you. <laughs> and let the dog out. Yeah. Let the dog out. Thank God. It's only the coffee. Uh, they did one show when I had COVID. Mm. and they couldn't edit it they just recorded it and then i had to go pick it up so they, so. they didn't even upload it or anything they just no they don't know how to do any of that yeah no no they just play and record i mean just record to record is that stop. why you have an engineer <laughs> right yeah but i'm the oldest guy on the show and i'm the tech guy but i remember too jared and i were on you guys' podcast right and we went somewhere else and we we're doing some work and he's like oh they uploaded it I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So you guys are like really quick. Like you upload it like same day or uh, it's usually next day. Uh, if we do it Monday, it goes out Tuesday. Okay, that's the way it normally works. But like I did a show before this one, I've already got it uploaded, ready for tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. We we do um like Wednesday and then either this Saturday or next Saturday. Yeah. Gotcha. So because uh you're gonna be episode seventy. Uh huh. We have sixty nine coming up. It's a special episode. Yeah. Well, so you know we gotta put that one out. <laughs> <I understand. laughs> this would have actually understand. been a great cigar for that. Oh uh, yeah, it would have. <laughs> yeah, that was um. You guys gotta turn it around. Smoked it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk about that too. We did talk we, about we, that. It yeah. was too late though. We already lit them up. Fratello makes a cigar that they want you to do that to. We talked about that. Yeah. It's like vice versa. Yeah. I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah. 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 I still have yet to try those, but. I didn't hear good things. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so... Well, you smoked it the wrong way. (laughs) Could have been. Might have been. I had the wrong end of my mouth. That's very possible. (laughs) Yeah, our uh, 69th cigar, we're going to have a box, and each cigar is going to come, like, alternating. You know, like they're 69 in, you know? Oh, you're the basis cigar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. (laughs) We might have to think of a different name. I I don't know if I can make 69 basis cigars. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, we could do like um, BDA, you know, like there you go, Big Dick Alex. I don't know. I'm just throwing, I'm throwing it out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wish. Yeah. And then, uh, so Palstani, you're basically going to be the cigar hustler representative. Sure, sure. Of today. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So I've heard all the stories enough. I can, I can tell the story. exactly. So you, go, I mean, you go to PCA with them all the time too. Like you're basically, yeah. I'm the uh, social media marketing guy for the team. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. So, oldest guy, but you get right. all the tech stuff. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. 
Yeah, yeah. Mikey does videos, but then they just sit there. He doesn't. Uh, he's not big on the <laughs> editing. He loves to make them, but he's not big on the editing. Yeah. That's basically Zach and Mark will send me videos. <laughs> just, just the raw videos. The raw footage, like, right. right. Yeah. Here, okay. do something with this. Well, I, I come on him about it, you know, just because, like, he has to show us how to do He's it. He's so defensive. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I'm, no, I mean, it's fine. It's yeah. Hey, I, I just don't want to learn it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if I sit down with him and show them, Zach, or Mark especially, is going to be like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's so, anyways, let me, let me send you these videos. <laughs> don't feel bad. I send you know Alex stuff too, but I couldn't figure out where he was. He's like my camera. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> Jared. I heard camera. another voice. Like what? what? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, he's gonna chime in like every ten minutes or so. <laughs> I'm busy right now. So. Okay. Good. You, yeah, you should be focused. So, Palstani, Palstania, however. Postania. Postania. Right. I, I always, I always flip flop. It's phonetically spelled on the box. It is. Okay. Yeah, so read the box. Why don't you right. say it? Uh, well, because you were talking. Okay. I don't want to go over you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Big Dick Galaxy name. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> it's gonna stick. I tell you, it's gonna stick. It is gonna <laughs> stick. All right. So tell us about the brand itself, because I mean, like you said, nine years, ten years. Well, they originally made the cigar uh, for a brand that nobody could mess with because they get a lot of flag from the, uh, the other guy that's close to you. We have a lot of problems with him, and he'll tell certain brands that they can't come to us and that kind of stuff. They had a giant Drew Estate event, uh, biggest event the shop's ever had still to date. And when he found out, he got mad to Drew Estate. They can't do any more events mm -hmm. at the shop. So they made the brand as something that they have that nobody else could. And it was just going to be for them, just mm -hmm. going to be in store. But they know a lot of people, and when they started finding out, everybody wanted to start carrying it. Yeah, of course. So, and it's made at Nicosuenu. It's made by the Roma Craft people. So, it's it's a well made cigar and a good factory. They are very good cigars. We our our good friend Jimmy over at Sally City Jimmy Cigars. Jimmy D's. Yeah, he was obviously he opened up. You guys were like pretty much one of the first ones that were in there, right? Um, and he's he carries like pretty much as much as he can. Of he buys Pistania. all the cigars from us. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. So I mean everything he carries. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, 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 well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, except for yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For now, he could though if he wanted. <laughs> right, he could. We could. But yeah, great cigars. Um, they which one do they start with? The uh, Habano or well, the? Well, they made both at the same time, planning oh, okay. on making one. Greg made the Broadleaf, and Mikey made the Habano. Mm. And the thing was, they were they had a contest. They made a bunch of unbanded cigars, brought them back to the shop, sold them in three packs, and let everybody vote. Mm -hmm. And then whatever one got the best, got the highest votes was the one they were going to make. Well, it was almost tied. Mm. So it was within three or something like that. So they decided, well, what the hell, we'll just make them both. Yeah, just get a head start on right. having a variety. Right. So the Broadleaf and the Abano uh, stuck around by themselves for, I think, about five, six years. Something like longer. And then they started doing LEs. And now they just did the Connecticut's last year. Okay, yeah. Connecticut's are good, too. It is. It's a good cigar. And that brand is based on Polish heritage, Yeah, right? because Mikey and Greg are Polish. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, Pastania means uprising. Supposedly, it's the thing that was yelled during World War II when the Polish were fighting uh, the Russians or Germans, whoever they were fighting. They were running in with bricks and sticks and pieces of wood and stuff, and then they were getting shot. But, you know, uh, that's that was their battle cry. It's hmm. pretty cool. So, yeah. And then the Votek, which was the first uh, LE that came out, is the War Bear. It's a bear that was... Uh, adopted by the army and it ended up carrying bullets and large shells into battle for them oh this is real like oh real it's a real bear. story oh wow. yeah a real bear yeah it was a black bear and it eventually retired uh somewhere somewhere in europe the bear retired in a zoo hmm. and the soldiers would come the ones that were left would come and throw him cigarettes and <laughs> beer over the fence and everything <laughs> until he died yeah i guess if it was a grizzly it probably wouldn't have worked out right yeah, those are a little meaner <laughs> a little meaner or a polar bear did, did it smoke cigarettes? Is that why? They yeah, it? yeah, it smoked cigarettes. Right. That's awesome. That's, yeah, they taught right. it to smoke cigarettes and drink beer. And Very cool. And carry giant shells. I was going to say, it sounds like they could just train this bear to do almost anything. Probably, yeah. Well, he could carry cases of shells where a man can only carry one or two. That's true. So it was moving a lot faster. That's crazy. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. We do appreciate having the history behind, you know, these cigars. Some of the cigars? Yeah. Right. You know, uh, kind of like our cigar, it's similar in the aspect of it has you know albanian history right and even the baku cry on the front that's kind of like their victory cry so kind of similar in that way similar, yeah yeah but it's always you need to have a story even if it's um <laughs> a story like this one <laughs> right a little, a little more colorful 
<laughs> little, yeah, yeah, definitely a little more colorful. Right. A little more um, hidden, hidden messages. Maybe? Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the hide them was Mikey's idea, but I had a, uh, a graphic artist that was a friend of mine who was willing to do it. And the first one was terrible. And it was just pink dicks all over the thing. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't discreet or hit them anywhere at all. But I was like, no, no, no. You have to sort of hide them. Yeah, I could imagine telling like a graphic designer, yeah, I want dicks all over it. And yeah, he's if, like, he wasn't, uh, like, if he okay. wasn't my friend, yeah, because Mikey's like, who can we get to do this? I go, oh, I know a guy. I yeah. Got a guy. <laughs> and it ends up looking just like a bachelorette cigar. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what it looked like. The first one did. So this is two years ago. This is your. First, first and only? That's the first and only. We are talking about maybe releasing a second one, maybe the end of this year, first part of next year. Would you do another BDP or would it be? Uh, BDP will be the name, but there'll be a secondary band. I already have a name yeah. picked. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey calls me sex tape. He goes, because Palmer will make you famous. Uh, uh, I'm going to guess it's going to be uh, Maduro of some sort. A darker. Yeah, yeah it will yeah. be a darker. Okay. It will be yeah. darker. That was a safe bet. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've reversed the band. so everyone and, then the, and then the blend, too. What is it? That's the part of it I haven't got yet. I've done all the marketing stuff already, obviously. The band is reversed, so everywhere where it's red on here, it'll be black, and everywhere it's black, it'll uh, be okay. red. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're See, too- I wish we had that cigar during our episode 69 with our weird cigar name. That's names. what I'm saying. Yeah. I should have asked what it was beforehand. Yeah, even this one? I decided or- to wait till the episode. <laughs> I wanted to be surprised. <laughs> like a twelve was it twelve? I honestly the, just wanted to make the joke and then it backfired because it ended up being just as bad. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've been I've been waiting all week for this. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, too, like getting ahead of the marketing aspect, as you said, is right. definitely a time saver. It's more fun for me. That too, yeah, yeah. Because we've got like a bunch of stuff that's like already like designed and stuff right just for eventually when we get there it's like okay we have stuff already right you know so always planning for the next thing it's a way to do it yeah keep ahead well it, it keeps you like going yeah yeah I that mean, too right yeah you, you know, go like i'm working to, i've got this already done blah, blah, blah. yeah you got a goal in mind so. right yeah i actually I like drew it. up the band at the pca this year oh really? on a bar napkin it's all these <laughs> no, great I, do, I do everything on my phone <laughs> everything i do is on the phone well, you know, the phone is a modern bar napkin, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. That is <laughs> Pretty true. much, yeah. Mike goes, what are you doing? I go, I just made the band for my new cigar. And he goes, oh, I just had an interview. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I talked to the guy before he talked to you. It's fine. So it's distributed through Postania, Poshik. as you said. Poshik is the name of the distribution. Gotcha, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you, have you done any, like, um, distribution like yourself like do you go yourself no mikey doesn't mikey's a salesman he does oh, okay. all that so you're just like here you go that's yeah, yeah, easy yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah here's my cigar sell it now work monkey work <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and um i mean palestania how many how big is this brand right now like a hundred different an shops across the country roughly okay yeah there's uh all the way from uh, shops out in hawaii new york all over up north so a hundred nationwide yeah Definitely become. I feel like every PCA you guys go to, it's like more and more. Yeah. Exposure. Luckily, that's the way it's been working. Right. right yeah. yeah. Obviously, and they, they keep the they keep a cap. They could have more customers, but the, but we we don't have enough cigars. Right. And you only want people that are going to back up the brand. You don't want to sell it. And some guy goes, "Ah, oh, looks nice. I'll buy those," and then he just throws it in his humor and leaves it. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't yeah. do anybody any good. That's true. We don't want the one, the first sale. We want the second, and the third sale. That's why, like. um when it comes to smoke shops, like we've thought about approaching some smoke shops for our brand, but it's right. like a lot of the times they get them and they sit there. Right. Unless like, somebody comes in and asks for it. Right. But no one's really going to a smoke shop for cigars. Right. Generally speaking. If they do, yeah. it's the, the Fuente or yeah. the uh, Julius Caesar. Or it's those type of things. The Monte Cristos. They're not looking for a boutique brand that they've never heard of before. Right. And they're not going to get pushed either. Right. No, not at all. No, the guy would rather sell his glass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why, like, you go to a shop like you guys or even, like, uh, Jimmy, it's a more, I would say, like, smaller shop that has a, a refined selection. Yes. So it's easier to push brands like that. Right. More hands-on. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody walks in, we say hello to everybody, and everybody gets offered help at the least if you don't walk in and just start chit-chatting with the guy in the in the humidor. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, we've noticed with, like, some of the, you know, bigger shops, 
there's cigars that sit there for years that have never oh yeah been they touched. don't move don't yeah, move at all yeah. right and no one ever recommends them because they forget they even have them to right. sell yeah, yeah so sure it's, like we we've realized that you know a lot we do a lot better in smaller shops just sure. because you know you get that personal connection with them they help mm-hmm. push it right and then you know people find out and then they're like oh shoot i'm gonna buy five more i'm gonna buy this i'm gonna buy this um Right. The yeah. best thing to do is get the guy that's uh, that working in the shop to like your cigar. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that's how it works. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, especially I mean, like you said, Scar International, huge shop with a huge selection. Right. It's very hard to you have to do the marketing yourself if you want to oh, yeah, you know yeah, your yeah. cigar to sell right. there. Right. Because like well, Zach they're said, they're gonna so rape many. you on the deal yeah. too. So that's true. Yeah. And there's so where many cigars, cigars go to die. Big brands, you know, got, I've got this one in the back. It didn't sell anymore. I'll tell you that one for a dollar or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. You put them but sometimes the... you can find a good one, though. I find some Matt Booth stuff sometimes in Tampa, and I'll text him and go, what is this? And he'll go, oh, I made that like seven years ago. They still have that there? It's funny you say that because we come across a lot of like very old cigars from Matt Booth. Yeah. I, oh, whether, I know. Whether it's, it's a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Casa, uh, Casa Monte Cristo or yeah. like Cigar International, stuff like that. We're like, oh, I didn't even know this existed. Right. Yeah. I like looking at the big shops online and going to like their deals oh, okay. and stuff like that. Right. Sometimes, sometimes you'll get lucky and find something yeah. that just was hidden for seven yeah, the years. Buy one, get one bin when you walk in the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buy one, get like three free. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like they don't know. These are good. Yeah. Yeah. And multiple times at the, cro- the shop across the street, not specifically this one, but like downtown or Sand Lake or something. Uh, we'll walk in there and we'll see, you know, just an old, I don't know, even like Davidoff or Padron or something. The cellophane is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my way. Cellophane is just yellowed out because it's been there for five, ten years, um, and no one's caught it. And then as soon as you know we find it or one of the guys at the shop finds it, uh, they're like, "Oh, did you smoke this? Did you see this?" And then it's sold out within a day. Right. Yeah. You gotta make been sure they're there for ten out. years. Now somebody knows what they got. Yeah. <laughs> You got to make sure the employees don't find out because then they buy them all. Yeah, once the employees find out, it's over because they buy them all plus they tell everyone, you know, so it's just, it's done. They only had two boxes of it. Employees get a hell of a discount over there too, from what I understand. Yeah, from big ones usually, yeah. 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 You guys don't get discounts that? Not like they do. Oh, I think they get, what, half off? Or yeah, half cost? something like, something like yeah. that. It's like a dollar more than cost. Cost so. plus 10, it basically comes out to yeah. half off on most of those. I wish. Maybe I'll get a part-time job. <laughs> That's what a lot of you guys do, just, to, for, just for the cigars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I was offered a job at least like three times. Yeah, I mean, but I never be, pulled the trigger. I got twice. We're too busy, though. Yeah, I know. We, we, decided, we decided to get I, well, into the industry ourselves. That I was, was a problem. <laughs> I was going to say, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Made that mistake. I was, I was, I was right gonna say, with you. I say we're too busy, but then we're there. <laughs> you know, so it's like right. I'll see a picture exactly, later. Yeah. You three of you guys sitting there. But I don't, four. I don't want to be four you confined there for eight hours. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. True. I want to make. I'm good stay. with four hours. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to go there because it's right across the street. But yeah, I tell you it's what, just right there. We we've been making a, a point to go to different shops too. Gotcha. You know, yeah, switch up a little bit. Like I've been going to Sanford a lot. Just to go see Jimmy, just Jimmy and Matt Jimmy. over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, drinks are always to, good. I could always used talk to call to him Little Jimmy, but he gets mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to call him that one. Call I go. him Little Jimmy because he had the same sunglasses, and the same hat at one time as Jimmy. Yeah. So he looked like a little Jimmy. But Jimmy said, "Don't call him that. He gets mad." I'm like, All right. <laughs> I won't call him Little Jimmy. You go over there quite a bit too. We used to more than uh, than we do now lately. My yeah. wife's been so busy; we don't get out much a lot. Yeah. She's an assistant principal at a high school now, so she's oh, okay. uh, always doing something. Yeah. There's Friday night's prom, so that's, there's, there's a football game, oh, wow. and then there's a prom dance, and so. And then they have soccer, I think, going on now, or baseball something. Yeah, it's always something. Always something. Once you get to, there. like, the, uh, vice principal or principal or that, it gets way busier. Oh, it gets worse. Being, like, a teacher. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, the administrators have to, um, all the events, everything they have. I mean, there's four of them, so they rotate, but still, that, that hits you at least once, maybe twice in a week. Yeah. yeah then you got to hang out with the teachers, too, just right, to like, get meetings. a relationship. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, our old principal at Lake Mary High School, Alex saw him at Corona Cigars with all the teachers just hanging out, smoking. While I was in high school. Yeah, while. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. We were 18, though, so I'm like, 
I, I was with a couple other guys and they're like, oh, is this like, okay. I'm like, we're 18. Like, right. You know, they're here too. I mean, they can't say anything. They were really cool. They're like, oh, what's up guys? So yeah, I was like, it's not a big deal, dude. It's, it was legal at the time. Right. Cause you're 18. Yeah. Yeah. Then they changed it. Yeah. Now you gotta be 21. They changed the law a day after I turned 21. Oh, perfect time for you. Yeah. So I got lucky. I had one whole day of not smoking a cigar. <laughs> well, in a shop. Right, exactly. Right. But I guess you can still smoke them. Yeah. You just can't purchase them. Right. No, we don't let you in if you're under 18. You can't smoke them either. Oh, really? Man, how'd you get it? Oh, a gift. How'd you get a gun at 18? You gotta be 21 to buy it. Well, I hope they don't have a gun either when they come. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you can't carry at 18. We're yeah. making yeah. them leave. They're gonna get mad. <laughs> <laughs> they can't carry it still, though. No, just in the car. It's like a state federal thing. It's like the state said you had to be 21, but federal is 18, or, or, the, right, or the opposite, yeah. something like that. It's a weird well, thing. I, I, think it w- I think in this situation, it was the state changed it, right? Because it wasn't yeah, a federal the state thing. Changed, yeah. The state changed it to 21, but the federal still said 18. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a weird thing because we had a lot of discussions like, oh, are we going to do it? Are we not doing it? I mean, which one we follow it? Yeah. So, but a state inspector is going to show up. I was going to say, nobody in the federal government is coming in the front door. You're more likely to get in trouble with the state right. than with the federal government, right. unless you're like some huge freaking operation. Right. And you're in the public eye. You've got classified documents in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't even get in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it seems there's a backstory there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, the politics for you. So, how's your new cigar doing? I had it the other day, it was good. Once, uh, That's we, fresh, man. Thank you for bringing that up. Once actually. we finally figured out what the taste was, Alex and I talking the other night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was texting him. He's like, it's got like this weird taste to it. It's, it's like not, it's not a bad taste. It's just something I can't place. See, I I said citrus. He said citrus. Maybe I was looking at the co- the the flavor wheel. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was like, what is it? So I came across uh, cardamom, and I was like, what does that even? Yeah, like, I have no idea. Like? You said that, and I'm like, I don't even know what. That I looked is. it up. I, don't I was even know like. What it is. <laughs> It's like citrus menthol. I thought of the menthol. guy from that, that cartoon, Cartman. This first thing oh, came yeah. to my mind. So I saw that and I was like, that sounds weird. Let's, let's look that up. Let's see what that tastes like. So what was it? What did it say? Sweet, salty, It's sour. like menthol, citrusy kind of oh. like flavor. I, I don't think it tastes like that because I've had it before in like a coffee. Have you? Cardamom? Yeah. Oh, cardamom. That's what they put in I've Turkish coffee. I've heard of it. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, they put it, uh, um, they put it in Turkish coffees. Like it, Arab people put it in Turkish coffees. Oh, gotcha. You know, so... If you go to, uh, uh, I don't know, like an Arab like a smoke lounge. shop. Yeah, like a hookah lounge. That's where we had it. So you have had it before. Because we were with uh, Yeah, but Paul. that was once. And yeah, I it was, it was He doesn't remember. He wasn't 21. Yeah. He doesn't remember. It's, it's an acquired <laughs> taste. Like, oh, I would imagine yeah. so. But I don't like it. If yeah. I ever get in my coffee, like, I, I just don't drink that don't coffee. Don't drink it at all. Yeah. I kind of... So I feel like I would have noticed if that was a flavor. It's either that or like, I did. I kind of see menthol, like just a little bit. But citrus might be just a better explanation for it. Because I understand what you're saying. It's right. not sweet, but it's not sour. It's like kind of like that. Somewhere I, in the middle. I yeah. could see citrus because, yeah. I mean, we've had a couple people say that they taste like citrusy and in the uh, other blend. Yeah. yeah, in our like original blend. I don't normally deal with all that kind of stuff. It's just too convenient. You know, oh, this tastes like yeah, I know. You know yeah. baking spices or something. I don't even know what a bacon spice is. Yeah. But it was such a unique flavor. That was the only way to describe it was citrus. Yeah. I mean, it's not sweet. It's not salty. It, you know, it's not regular tobacco. Yeah, that's what um, uh, Kevin from Cigar Prop. He said the same thing. He's like, I'm tasting something, but I have no idea what it is. Oh, like, is he the other one too? Yeah, he's, yeah, a, yeah, he's a good guy. I like. Yeah, him. he's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I sent him um, one. It, it wasn't this exact blend, but it was the one right before it. And he texted me like this long thread of just yeah. like his whole review. Oh. Not, so I'm like, you know, I appreciate that. Right. Yeah. But he's super passionate now guy. I feel bad. I just gave you one line in a text. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be something the to main, follow. The main part, follow up. The it's main, all right, you know. <laughs> yeah, the main right. part is like, how'd you like it? That's all. the main thing I care about. Right. He's super yeah. passionate about it. He'll get like into details and with pretty much every cigar he smokes. Yeah. I mean, like, even his podcasts are what, three hours long? <laughs> Dude, yeah. for real. Yeah. How do those people do that? He just he know. just talks. Yeah, he goes. He's I mean, a we, we could do one, but who's going to listen for three hours? Yeah, people do. Surprisingly, that's what we were on his show one time, and we were like mentally preparing ourselves because we're right. like, he's going to have us here for three hours. We don't usually do this. We're not used to it. Right. I think it ended up being two hours. 
Yeah, great time. You're like, like, oh, thank God. He had like pre-scripted questions and like went around the room. Yeah, he does a lot of research. He, he, yeah, he. Oh, he, a lot of work, huh? He's very good at like keeping it going. Yeah, for as long as possible. I mean, you've seen sometimes he does two, three hours. Most of the time, it's two up are, to three. Uh, Coop, uh, how about that cigar? Uh, even developing pallets where they just talk about cigars. They don't even ask questions. Yeah. For it's us, it's so like long. we can get a lot of information in an hour. Yeah. The cigar is out. Okay, cool. We're ready right. Right. Exactly. I mean, what else are you can talk about for an hour? Yeah. I mean, after an hour, you're making stuff up. Well, then we had um, down to herf on those guys. Yeah. And they're a hoot. They're on our they, network. Yeah. Yeah. They even have like their after show. Right. And we've talked about doing that. And I feel like by the time we finish our main one, we're like, all right, I'm kind of like. Well, they've turned into right. their, their Patreon now. Yeah. So you got to yeah. pay to be on it. We have a Patreon also where Mikey tells secrets that he's not supposed to tell mm. and we review a cigar. But still, that one's 30, mm. 30 to 45 yeah. minutes to an hour tops. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do that right after the show or do you do it? It depends a on day? scheduling. Okay. But we try to do it right after. And then it comes out on Thursdays. Yeah. Only Thursdays. Sometimes I put it out earlier, but I can't do that anymore. Yeah. People are complaining. If they don't see it on Tuesday, like, where is it? Well, it comes out on Thursday, and they'll tell Mikey. Or Mikey says, it comes out on Thursday. And they'll go, no, not last week. Yeah, what about last, paying last for? week? came out on Tuesday. Yeah, we're paying for this. Can we get it on Tuesday? Yeah, it's, be- it's better to have a scheduled day. That's why you don't have people waiting for it or expecting it. You know, and then oh, if, if our show, for some reason, the regular show, if it doesn't go up, if it's not up by 6 a.m. Tuesday morning, I get a text message from Skip Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it's waiting for me when I wake up. Where's the show? Or it's just the emoji going, I got, I'm like, I'm so sorry, Skip. I forgot to do it. Because he gets his own version of the show sometimes. Mm. Like the Patreon. He gets his own version of the Patreon. Oh, okay, yeah. He gets Dropbox to him. Gotcha. So if he doesn't get that right away, I just have to pay. He's like, what's going on? Yeah, where is it? What am I paying for? <laughs> well, he doesn't technically pay for the show, but uh, Roma, yeah, Craft, like yeah. Roma Craft bought me my first computer for the podcast. Mm. Oh, yeah? So they're like uh, a sponsor. Kind of yeah, without being named. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, we were using an old laptop from the shop, and yeah. I always complained. said it was a 1972 IBM I had to do the show on because <laughs> it was all sorts of problems. So they bought me this giant, huge, it had to be expensive, the laptop, the mouse, I mean, everything, the whole setup. So now they get Patreon now for the rest of their lives. Gotcha. That's awesome. That's a fair trade-off. Yeah, that's what I feel. That's like when we first started, we were using a Windows laptop that I had. Yeah. This a Lenovo, like, cheap laptop. Right. And it'd run, like, for 720, it was okay. Uh, but it'd be really slow. Then we tried using his Mac, which is, like, how old? Like, yeah, right now, 10, 10 years old, probably. Right. So it's Seven better. It's better. It was but, better, but still problems. And then this guy wanted to drop a bunch of money on a Mac so we're able to do like anything we want now basically oh now we're doing like what 4k 60 fps per episode now yeah yeah i don't even know what you said <laughs> it's because he's too tech faster guy. because he <laughs> the, well i got the 4k but what'd you say after that 60 fps i don't even know what that is. frame, per, frame yeah. per second or something? i think yours is 60 fps oh is it i'm pretty sure yeah i just i just put it on the highest, looks like the highest it. one yeah so and everything just, still works exactly all right as long as it looks good and it works Right, Mikey's always critical. Oh, it sounds bad. Oh, there's humming or oh, it's too grainy. You do it. <laughs> yeah, then you can do it. No, no, you figure it out. Like, spending more money. Exactly. It's always something. Always. He wants new cameras now, but I upgraded the software on all the cameras, and so now it looks better to me. But he still says it's not. It's but, not like yeah. 8K, 120 yeah, FPS. Yeah, but see, new cameras mean a new system because then. The, because like we yeah. use we use Mevo cameras. You guys are there. You saw the Mevo cameras. Yeah, they they yeah. run on an iPad. Simple, easy peasy. You touch the screen, switches screens for the cameras. He wants like we have a soundboard for all the microphones. Well, apparently there's a video board thing too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they cost like thirteen hundred dollars for the basic one. Yeah. That you hook all these cameras to. That's the problem. Once you want to get like higher quality something, right? It always gets more complicated because you need something to go with it. Right. Right. You can't just buy the camera. You got to buy the computer that runs the camera. Mm -hmm. And then you need special cables. Exactly. And then you need this and the. That's like when we first started, we had this whole rigged up setup for our cameras and stuff. Right. And then it ended up being, oh, we can use our iPhones. None of that stuff was like relevant anymore. (laughs) It became like easier in a way, but other stuff got, the software got complicated, but the hardware was easier now. Right. So it's like, there's always something. I have a drawer in the studio. One of them's full of cables. One of them's full of microphones. One of them's full of headphones. Stuff we don't touch anymore. Yeah. 
I think we got yeah we got a bin over there. We got a probably bunch of cords, one yeah. behind. Yeah. One now behind we Mark. just uh, we have so many of these microphone cords that when we do a mobile podcast, we just don't even need to take this stuff down. We just oh, you just yeah. go. We Kids. bought a tiny set to use. I can't figure out how it works. Well, I was getting annoyed any time we did a mobile podcast that we would have to disassemble all this, yeah. reattach it. Right. So finally, mm-hmm. like, I just bought all the cables. I'm like, I'm gonna buy a bunch, and we, you know, we tape this to the table just so it wouldn't be dangling mm-hmm. all right. over, you yeah. know, guests and stuff. Um, now we can and just then now take we have these. Yeah, we I, just unplug them and take them. Yeah, I all put the cords hooks under our table, and I'm laying on there in my back with a drill and these little hooks I'm screwing in and yeah. hanging the wires on them. Yeah, it's a way to do it. You got to be organized. Now, if you look under there, now I don't know. So, like, I learned how to use the, the travel set one time, but then we never used it. So, the next time he said, hey, let's go. And I looked at it like, I don't, I don't know what I did. <laughs> that was six months ago. I've learned three other things since then. Mm-hmm. That's a, only so much room. I'm old. That, that's why you just got to use the iPhones, man. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Then you can't use them on the actual set. Right. You know, there's always something. Yeah, there's yeah. a trade off or something. Yeah. yeah. That's like when we first started, we had all the cords on the table. Yeah. That, that was what was pissing Zach off. Yeah. Right. It was so messy. I hate when yeah. stuff looks messy. Yeah. I mean, I know, now, now I know just, it's not clean uh, yeah, right now. I say but, I'm looking around a little bit. Uh, you yeah. might be going crazy. Yeah. 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 Now we're just messing with everything else, not the cables. <laughs> 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 yeah, we can afford to have glasses all around the place. But yeah, so I mean, so let's talk about your book. Do you guys really write the book? I mean, yeah, we did. Alex, Alex. Wait, I don't like the way you said that. It we were sound contributors. Like legit, you know. <laughs> uh, let's just say this: it didn't take very long. Ah, <laughs> and then because it's hardback. Oh yeah, so hardback, soft cover, um, and then it's just done through oh, Amazon. You so- oh, you so basically, cover, you order on Amazon, they they print it all. So oh, do they yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just give them all the information. Just send them like a, a big PDF. File. So like through yeah through Kindle, you upload it on Kindle basically. Yeah, and then you can have the option for a soft cover or a hard cover. Oh, and then they handle all the printing and shipping and stuff. Oh really? Yeah. So oh, we're super gonna put out Yeah, super easy. With AI now, I can write a book. It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you do it, though, we'll have volume two out by then. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe. How many have you sold? Um. Wait. Do, well, let's back up. Do they charge you to do everything or no? No. So so basically, it costs X amount, right? and then you just upcharge. So let's say it costs like two dollars for them to make that book. Okay. You can charge ten. Oh, then they then, send you eight bucks. Right. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Something yeah. Like for that. example. Right. You even make money on the Kindle, which is like cents on the dollar because right. it's, it's video. Right? The, yeah. Or not video, but the, it's it's not printed. <clears throat> right. It's just an email they get or whatever it is. But I think um, we've definitely sold. Like close to hundred, I think. Oh, good. And we don't That's even good. we don't even promote it. Right. Yeah, it's well, just kind of the there. beginning. I remember seeing it. Seeing yeah, it in the beginning. yeah. But now it's just set dressing. Pretty much, yeah. So I mean, it ended it ended up being like a few hundred bucks, maybe. Yeah. That's so. sitting in there. Yeah. Oh, just sitting there. You haven't even cash it out yet. No, it's just sitting. Just letting it grow. Yeah. Do you get interest? No, I wish. No, that'd be nice. We need we need to put it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we can get like <laughs> two cents a day. It's better than nothing. Right. Exactly. And it keeps growing. But yeah. I'll tell you what, we'll be pretty hype when that two cents goes up to three cents. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> we'll put it in a money market. You guys won't have to share cigars anymore. Everybody gets their own. Because the original idea of it, too, was mainly a promotional thing. Right. But it ended up being so simple. I was like, oh, okay, if we do end up promoting this, like, you know, you can just make some, some extra money on it. Right. Yeah. Just play money. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Money that ends up going to new filters or new cords. Those, or, those things are expensive. Yeah. And it, it's supposed to be once a year you replace it, but for us... Is it really? Yeah. We had ours in there, I think, for three years. I replaced it once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Not a huge problem, but... Well, there used to be a church in there. Mm. So they gave it to the church because they complained about the smell of the smoke. Oh, gotcha. So when we got the room, we inherited the rabbit. Yeah. So, bought a new filter system then, because Greg wouldn't pay for it. I'm like, this is nasty. This is terrible. Because it's not mine anymore. It's yours. And then recently, I, I bought all those. But I found a cheaper one or something on Amazon. Yeah, they have different ones. Yeah. Yeah. This one, if once it's expired, it'll have a big red light on there that says, like, change me. Yeah, replace filter. Yeah. Yeah, ours is on now. 
I can take it out and clean the machine. I can still get like another yeah. couple of months out of it. It's once a year you're supposed to replace it, but I feel like it might be sooner for us because there's always like you know four or five people right. that are smoking in here. So right. it's like we just installed a ceiling, uh, like a bathroom exhaust fan, mm. in the room, and it just sucks it out and blows it into the front room. Because when there's like four guys in there. Oh, okay. Oh, so oh, the, yeah. the room that you walk into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When there's four or five guys in there, or even more than more than the normal. Because normally Mikey is the only one that smokes, and sometimes Phil does during the show. I'm just too busy. I can't. I can't smoke. It's just. Oh, yeah. I'm just constantly relighting. Is all I'm doing. So yeah. why do you have it blow out in the front room instead of uh, outside? Uh, because it's a concrete building, and there is no way to get it through the outside wall unless <laughs> I put a hole in it. I mean, they make drills. <laughs> yeah, but then there's a hole. You do it. And that front, yeah, then I'm going to have to do it. I'm not drilling a hole through there. I'll do it. You want me to do it? I'll do it. No, I don't want to do it. I've already got, I've already got the drill. No one's in the, the front room thing. anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, w there's a podcast in there every Friday. I engineer a d another show. Yeah, but you're not doing it while someone else is no, in no, there. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. What so it doesn't really matter. There? No. Exactly. I was thinking you blew it into the lounge. <laughs> you said no. they won't notice. Oh, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. You know, when yeah, they yeah. built that lounge, I wanted them to put like a glass window in so that people could watch us. Oh, the not the bottom lounge. Oh, the, I was thinking the you, top. You're, oh, you're, you're talking about too many, in the, too many the, pri the private lounge. Yeah, I wanted a glass window so they could watch yeah, yeah, yeah. us. Oh, that'd you know what? Cool. That'd be nice. There's, there's a first room, and then there's the podcast room. Oh, he gotcha. blows it into that that lobby. Okay, basically. Gotcha. Yeah, All there's right. a wall that separates. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the wall's plaster. You can drill through that. Yeah, we put that in. That would be cool though, having a glass thing to view. Yeah, I thought that'd be cool too. They said it was too expensive. Yeah, hey, glass is expensive, especially big sheets like that. Well, something like the size of the TV. Oh, just like a small? And then oh, you I was say, thinking like floor to ceiling, oh, like no, all no, no, glass. No, no, no. Then you can say you have a live audience. Yeah. Right. And, and then you can put on the speakers so they hear you. Sure. Exactly. Oh, see, that would all be cool. Yeah. yeah. I said just do it. Just go in there one well, Sunday. Not, you know. no, no, not now. It's already finished. <laughs> and that's where the TVs are in the private lounge. So you could connect it to the TV, like a live feed. Yeah, oh, put a camera right on the other that's end. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, but that would be easy. Like, you wouldn't need a camera. You just have to somehow connect it to the feed, like where the iPad is. That's true. And connect it to a TV. Oh, you can just go through the ceiling. There's nothing up there. Not a bad idea. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm sure that's complicated. It'd be cool, though. If it, <laughs> it does. I don't know how you get it off the iPad. <laughs> There's only one jack on there where you, you, just, where you yeah, charge they, it. Then oh. you go buy another software. You could just, <laughs> yeah, more software, another machine. Play it off of YouTube and then pretend like it's live. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that upstairs. We used to play the show on Saturday mornings. And then people stop watching it. So, <laughs> yeah, when we go to uh, like cigar events, like or for cutting lights for Pesa, yeah, right? If they have like TVs and stuff that access YouTube, we'll be like, hey, you can put on like the the podcast. And then we would have done that at ours. You should have asked. I totally forgot. Mm. That's it. Next time, yeah, we were at London House and they were playing our. <laughs> <laughs> they're playing it there. Have you seen that place? No, where's London House? Is that the one in Merritt Island? No, no it's in no, Sand Lake. Oh, Sand Lake. It's like a private lounge, but they have uh, something called the Drawing Room, which is a private cigar lounge. Right. Uh, and it's beautiful in there. I mean, it's ginormous. Um, all couches, salas, private areas in there, patio. Oh, wow. Uh, beautiful bar. And they do a lot of cool events over there. You know, they'll have a guy rolling cigars and where they keep their lockers at because uh, they actually have like a display area where you know the cigar roller will sit and everyone kind of just walks around them um but yeah we we were over there we had a meeting over there and they gave us control of the remote so we signed in <laughs> we put the cigar guys on there we're all just sitting Good at the bar you. but wow this show's great guys everybody should watch come on yeah. <laughs> these guys came up to the bar and they're like talking to the bartender or whatever and then one of them goes like like looking at looking at the TV, <laughs> looking at us, look like at the TV. You know, look at you. Hey, look at this! You know, everyone's got a beard now. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even the bartender, the bartender, of like finally after like thirty or forty five minutes, she's like, "Oh, wait, is that you guys?" <laughs> like, yeah, it is. But everybody's got short beards now, except him. Yours got quite long there Mine's for a while. Again, yeah. yeah, it's getting longer. Is it getting longer again? Yeah, you have to shave it for the wedding or shave it down. I don't know. Last time, so I cut it to like your length, yeah. and she got mad at me. Oh, really? Yeah. My wife likes it better this way. Well, that's what I thought too. In the winter time, I grow it big, like Santa Claus. Originally, when we first met, I had like a shorter beard, right? And I showed her like pictures of when it was really, really long, and she's like, "Never grow it like that again." But it takes so long that like you never notice, right? So then she got used to the long one, uh. and then she's like, "Don't cut it short again." I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I really wanted to. 
<laughs> right. Anybody else married? I'm engaged. You're engaged? Yeah. Technically, I'm not married either. Well, uh, I know, but you're close. Pretty Might much, as well yeah. be. Yeah. yeah. Does she live here too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you're Basically married. married. You're married. Yeah. You're married. Yeah. I got engaged like two weeks before him. So it was like, oh, he but, copied me. So. Oh, I want to be just like him. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's <laughs> like my role model. <laughs> when's your w- wedding? Uh, Probably next summer. Oh, so was, uh, you don't even have a date yet? Uh, July. You're not really, you're not really copying. You're so far <laughs> exactly, ahead. Exactly. He was tasting food, he told me. I was just postponing it so I could do the big Paris thing, you know. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, Alex yeah. is trying to get married as quickly as possible for tax benefits. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. So, it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, also, mine is a lot more. Like, ours is like 200 plus people. Oh, man. So, it's a bigger, bigger thing Which to plan. Which is small big, for Albanians. Big, yeah, big Albanian yeah. family. Right? Yeah, that is small for an Albanian wedding. My cousin in New York, he had his wedding at uh, like 450 people. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. If you add all three of my weddings together, I don't have that many people. <laughs> <laughs> the last one was at my parents' house. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. My parents would tell me a story when they first moved down to Florida. You know, Albanian weddings, like everyone dresses up real nice, you know. I mean, like a normal wedding, I guess. But when they moved down to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us schlubs, we just come in short, right? Well, well they, they went to like a backyard wedding. And everyone's wearing jeans and t-shirts, whatever. And they showed up and, you know, all my dad showed up in a suit. Everything. My right. mom's wearing a gown, you know. And they're like, what the hell is this? Oh, and in Florida, it's probably hot as hell. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So they walked in the back. They're like, whoa, what are you guys wearing? I'm like, you, were you told us we're coming to a wedding? <laughs> Florida wedding. It was a Florida wedding, sir. Exactly, yeah. You know, alligators just roaming around. Right. They're like, I didn't realize bear is uh, an alligator. I didn't realize this was a rehearsal. <laughs> That'd be cool. Write that down, Alex. An alligator mm, being alligator a ring bear. alligator ring bear. They don't allow pets, but an alligator is not a pet. It is, not is there water on the property? Where are you getting married? Probably. Close. Could be an alligator already. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I don't know where that came from. He Listen, just needs some chicken. We'll get Steve Irwin's son mm. to fly yeah, up yeah. from Australia and bring an alligator. Yeah, well, you just got to act mad about it. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is there well, an alligator doing? He can bring an alligator. He can grab one. <laughs> oh, somewhere. grab one here. You know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, he knows expensive what he's doing. to bring one. Sure. I don't know. We thought his dad knew what he was doing, too. That didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, I have a forever good, vendetta yeah. against stingrays. Me too. Every time I see one, I just want to want to hit it. You know, it's a dilemma. <laughs> it's a dilemma because you want to hit it, but he taught us to be kind to these animals. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, I want it. Steve, you're so yeah. torn. You're so torn. No, it's, it's rough. I yeah. should kill it for Steve, but Steve said, no, let it live. Yeah. <laughs> Steve wouldn't want that. <laughs> Steve wouldn't want that. <laughs> just cut the barb off. Meet him yeah. halfway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Rest in peace, Steve Irwin. So what other obscure thing can we bring up? This is great. <laughs> this is what happens when you come on the cigar guys. We, we talk about cigars and then yeah, we just, we just oh, that's f- fine. forget we, that we're smoking sometimes cigars. Sometimes don't even talk about cigars on our show. That's good. Yeah. We we did a conspiracy episode early on, like episode five. Right. People are telling us to bring it back and do more oh, conspiracies. Yeah. Well, down to Herf does a conspiracy every week. Caleb does it, I think. True, yeah. Puts on his tinfoil hat. They're they're funny guys. They are. They are yeah. funny guys. I think it kind of we kind of got into the conspiracy talk with them. Yeah, yeah, because uh, we brought them on, and Jared and I were sitting there, were like it's it's gonna come up, like it's gonna happen. <laughs> but yeah, we need to do another like dedicated episode with conspiracy theories. Are you be conspiracy now, or are you just a? Uh, when I was doing the Chet and Palmer show, we did an episode on conspiracy theories. It was okay. Yeah, I saw I saw one that uh, turns out. Yeah. King Charles right. is a descendant of Count Dracula. I haven't seen that one, but I could see that. Yeah. And he now yeah. lives in his castle. Mm. Oh. Didn't he die and he's got cancer or something? Supposedly. I don't think that's confirmed. Oh. Was it confirmed? I'm oh, pretty I sure know. that was like a, a rumor. It probably is true. Oh, that was confirmed because it doesn't, uh, what's his name's wife has cancer too. The son's wife. I heard that too. Uh, I did. Again, I don't think that's. Wait, no, that is confirmed. That she is did confirmed. Come out. Yeah. yeah, I've got a friend who lives in England. I asked him what happened to her when she was missing because they tell him over there. I guess yeah. he goes, "No, no, she got cancer." That was like the theory yeah. for a while, and then I think you're right, like a couple weeks ago or something. Yeah, they came yeah. out with an actual statement. Yeah, official yeah. statement. Right. Well, they came out with all those fake pictures of her, like doing stuff. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah that's what's so bad AI stuff. Yeah. yeah. Where she's got three fingers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you look right here, by her hip. Right. That doesn't look right. Like that's obviously Photoshop. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, though. I mean, if you look at AI like last year versus this year, Bro, I mean, like, oh, it's three like months crazy. ago. I use it all the time. There's a brand new one that's close to perfect. Yeah, 
I send it to my wife sometimes. I'll do pictures of people that supposedly look like us. She goes, yeah. who are these people you're taking pictures of? <laughs> <laughs> That's us, honey. She goes, That's You not find you. a lot of doppelgangers of us. Right, exactly. <laughs> They're all in Central Florida. He said the other day he gave me three elbows. So, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> the guy's arm was bent and it was a third arm underneath him or something. I'm like, ah, she'll see that. I'm not, I can't use that one. Yeah, we have some that we, you know, we post on like Instagram and stuff of just us. Oh, I see the ones you guys do, your caricatures and stuff. Those are yeah. great. Yeah, those are awesome. But <laughs> to get them to where they're at, it takes a little bit of finessing because right, you, know, yeah, it does. you have four guys smoking a cigar and next thing you know, there's three arms, each holding two cigars, right. one's yeah. in his mouth. Fingers missing. Yeah, 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 the guy's mouth's open, but the cigar's out here. Yeah, the main problem I see is... Which is good, because like then everybody said. can't do it. Yeah, true. Yeah, I guess uh, we still need someone to be a graphic designer at the end of the day. The graphic designer facilitator, the AI facilitator. Well, that's you, right? And you? Yeah. We yeah. Even and com- Jared. Companies are hiring yeah. now for AI specialists. Yeah. Like people who could deal with like the AI and oh, convert right. it. So. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Hmm. Which yeah. is pretty smart. I use that for all our episode descriptions. When I go out, yeah. And now I use it for the for the art for every episode. I use it for that too. Why not? And for the stuff for the shop, you can put in. Give me a cigar post or a cut and light event for Pol- yeah, use cigars. cigars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used it for you. You said it to me. I was like, oh, that's actually really good. Yeah, but I know for like the cigar, you have to actually put the cigar in there, I, yeah, but then you make it well, look the, like the cigar is there, but you have to put the band. Yeah. On. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it won't understand what your band is, and no, you, and you can't no. say without a band either. It yeah. doesn't understand that either. Like, what's a band? Yeah, even yeah. Uh, some of the stuff we've done, like with Albanian, you know, the Albanian eagle. Right. It's like it always gives it like an extra tongue or an extra mouth or something. And even though we give it source material to put, we're like, hey, use the flag from this one and it will still come out wrong. Right. Um, yeah, because you can't like do a direct copy still. Yeah. Even with like spelling. Like, well, that's you know. what I heard that Skip Martin said. That's why the spelling's always wrong because then they don't have copyright issues. Uh, mm. But the new one I'm using, it gives you four options every time you do it. One of them will be, be spelled right. Mm. Three of them are spelled wrong. So then I work from that one, and then I start tweaking. And usually, okay. But like your name, like I told you, that one, it put twos in instead of the Zs. So like the yeah. top of the Z was curved. Oh, yeah, So yeah, it spelled yeah. your last name with number twos in mm. instead of Zs. And then I fixed it one day. I had to cut and paste the Z on the end. I took it out of the middle. Do they not realize that? I put it on the end. The way my last name is spelled is like the correct way? They don't know. It's a computer. They have no <laughs> idea. Ridiculous. They're listening to us right now. Be careful. Oh, sure they are. Yeah, yeah right. I know. Yeah. I know. They'll yell at me when I get home to try to do something new. We yeah. heard no, you. No, you talk bad about us on the show. Yeah, we we, we got to be nice to them now. So when they take over, right? You know? Exactly. <laughs> Remember me? I was one of the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what AI programs uh, do you use? Uh, well, I, it depends on what I'm doing. So like I use that's a good answer. I use Chat GBT for all the uh, just the script, just the, yeah, the yeah. texting and stuff. And then I used uh, I use Copilot. Which came out during the Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. You've been but, using Copilot. Right? I, I use Copilot. Yeah, use Copilot. But the new one I just found is called. Uh, it's called IDEO Ideogram at AI. Mm. That's the best one for graphics and stuff I have found. Really? Have you used ChatGPT's uh, graphics stuff? Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's iffy. But the thing I like about that is it has so many different bots now. So you can get one that's like specific for logos or specific for mm. like the cartoons that we do. Or like we, the comic we have books. a pig roast this month with Ponce. So that's the one. Mm. Ponce's pig roast. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that one's very good. But I had to take the bands off the cigars. Again, I had the wrong bands. And then my new logo for the new show, Palmer Show Plus One, that was done on AI. Uh, I just did one. So you do... Two podcasts, technically. I do two. I'm on two, and yeah. I engineer a third. So Chet left a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Chet and Palmer show is no longer around because Chet decided he didn't want to do podcasts anymore. So we're part of a network, the Digitin Podcast Network, with this, uh, this big health and wellness network took our show because we did health problems for middle-aged men, health, uh, med- or not health, uh, health, emotional, and financial problems of middle-aged men in whatever, the, in the 2024, whatever it was. Yeah. So we get on there. So uh, I didn't want to let the show go. I wasn't ready to quit, even though Chet left. Yeah. So uh, I almost, I actually, on the show, I had announced I was just going to stop. Because it takes up a lot of time, especially if you got to do it by yourself. But then I came up with the idea, the last show I did when Chet was still part of the show, he was sick, he wasn't there, I did an interview show. I interviewed this lady, uh, Sarah Valentine. She was a, uh, she's a men's 
emotional and sexual coach and a sexual ninja. So I'm not sure what the ninja part was. She tried to explain it, but but it went really well. I enjoy doing it. So now I do a weekly interview show called the Chet or not the Chet called the Palmer Show Plus One Podcast, and Plus One is always a new guest every week. Yeah, yeah. So it. Did you set it up like a totally new one, or is it like a continuation? You just change the name and everything. Uh, like that? Well, on Facebook, if you want to change the name, you have to ask permission. If you yeah. already have a fan page, things up. So that one, I just let go. I okay. change. I change all the graphics as like an announcement. I was doing, but then I started a new fan page for the new show. Okay. Uh, Digitant kept me on. Yeah. They didn't go away, so they cleaned up. Uh, uh, they made basically what they did. They took all the Chet and Palmer shows, and made them private, so you couldn't see them anymore. And then we just changed the name and the graphics and everything. You keep all the followers and all that. Keep all the yeah, followers okay. and everything, and the name changes. So if you look up the Palmer Show Plus One, you get the new show, yeah. and it still has, and it has all the new graphics and everything. Okay, yeah. So that way, yeah, that way I didn't lose all the followers and the subscribers and all that stuff. Yeah, because you don't want to start over completely. Right. Yeah. And then on YouTube, same thing. I just changed all the graphics, changed the name, and I'm slowly deleting uh, the older shows. Okay, yeah. You can do 27 at a time, so everyone's on board. I'll go in and just delete 27 of them. And it starts out with the show with Dr. Sarah Valentine, and then the show announcing they're changing, and then the first show went up last week. And it's actually doing well. It did well. Okay, good. It did nice. better than the Chet and Palmer show was doing. Hmm, I was nice. really surprised. Well, you had a sexual ninja on, so I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. That wasn't, that wasn't the first show. I had, a oh, okay, okay. I had a religious guy on. Oh, okay. John Richards, and we talked about so how. you completely uh, flipped. You went religious right, guy. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about how religions become big business in America. Mm. And he's this ultra conservative religious guy who's quoting stuff from the from the Bible and everything. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, he he had fun with it. He he wasn't serious about anything. Yeah. You know, we didn't burn crosses or anything on the show. <laughs> so and then today I did a show today before I came here uh, with John McTavish from Developing Pilots. He said he'd love to do you guys' show. By the way, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, we uh, he's middle aged. He lives in Canada. We talked about transitioning careers and middle age because he's he's been looking for work for six weeks up there and can't find anything. Yeah. So we talked about that today. So, so that he's moving down here. Tomorrow. Got it. Well, he'd, lo he'd love to. <laughs> yeah. I asked him that. Well, would you think about moving here? He would love to get a tobacco business here because he's been doing a tobacco podcast for 16 years. Oh, okay. So, but he would have to find a job before he came and then he's got to have a special visa. Does he come down here a lot or is he like, did he, he was in here for your show? No, no. We, we do. I do phone. If you can't be in okay, studio, yeah. I do. So every other show I do an in studio and then a phone in studio okay, and yeah. phones. The way I'm trying to set it up. And I'm, I'm booked now till June. Oh, as nice. far as interviews. Yeah. And I've only got one week left in June. I booked two today. I made it. I'm in May, right? Yeah, you're in May. Nice. Yeah, you're in May. And I had a guy cancel this morning. There's this drink uh, in Wisconsin called, they're called Drinking Buds. It's a CBD, TC, whatever uh, drink. No mm. alcohol in it. Oh, okay. So they were, yeah. were going to be on May 8th, but he had to cancel today. And then another guy asked me if he could be on the show, so I just flopped the guys. So, uh, me, me and Jared yeah. are big Kava guys now, so yeah. We could be on the show. <laughs> you ever heard of Kava? No, what's Kava? Kava is like a root uh, from a, well, it's like a Asian or yeah, it's like an Asian thing. Yeah, yeah, it's an it's a root from an Asian country that is supposed to like mellow you out. Right, it gives you kind of like the same effects as alcohol, but but not the drunk part. Do you? What do you yeah. eat it? Do you drink it? What do you so do? You, you, drink like it. you drink it. There's like there's Kava bars. Like Kava culture is oh. one in Lake Mary. Um, there's one in Winter Park. They're like popping up all over the place. Then there's a, something called Elixir, which is a tea from like South Africa, I think. Um, and it does the same thing, but there's different like variations of, you know, the, the tea leaf. Right. Where some yeah. will give you energy, some will give you relaxation, some will give you, you know, sleepiness, whatever. Um, I think we should carry that, that stuff in a pill at Hustler years ago. Probably. Yeah. I, I think they make it in pill form. Like yeah, pill, powder, can. drinks. But yeah, now they made like mixologists from it. Yeah, at the Kava yeah, bars, wow. tea's been like a big thing with those. So it's, it's kind of like a tea or they'll do like shots so it's more concentrated. So yeah. Kava, uh, Kava culture, like they kind of changed it because the first time we went to one, yeah, it was like shots yeah. um, or like hot tea or whatever. They did cocktails too. Now, yeah, now it's like cocktails, seltzers, so like was, they yeah. had beer, quote unquote beers, you know, like they kind of or trying to trick the mind into, you know. Yeah. I remember the first like time that. I went to one, it was like this buddy that I knew from growing up. He took me to one and he's like really hyping it up. And he's like, yeah, like, you know, you might get like really like not drunk, but like. Oh, it's great. You're yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we should never go like, back to alcohol. Exactly. We right. should like three shots. And he's like, oh man, I'm like definitely feeling it. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh really? Like, like okay, I feel nothing yeah. at all. Literally, literally <laughs> nothing. I might have felt like a little bit more relaxed, right? 
but I'm also yeah. like, that this also is the happens placebo when you're just, effect. Yeah, <laughs> when you're, right, you're expecting it, so right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, both me and Jared have gone multiple times. I like going there because it's a nice place to work. Right. You know, uh, you just open your laptop. It's a nice, relaxing culture. But uh, me and Jared have gone there multiple times, and we haven't felt anything to be honest mm-hmm. with you. The drinks are good though. Yeah. Right. They you taste know? good. Yeah. They don't but do then for I think you. I think Jared looked it up. It has the same effects to your liver as alcohol does. Oh. Oh, then why? Maybe I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tear up my liver and not get drunk? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we were saying. And I was telling my coworkers about it. And they're like, well, did you feel anything? I'm like, I don't think so. And then one of them was like, listen, if you got to think if you felt something, you probably didn't feel something. <laughs> exactly. Right. Is it expensive? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it sounds really like it would be expensive. It's basically like alcohol prices, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. More than that, <laughs> to be honest Dang. with you. Yeah. And nothing. And nothing. Uh, because like yeah. you get a drink you get a 16 ounce drink over there it's like minimum 10 bucks wow. 12 bucks I, I got a 24 ounce and I, I just got one and it was uh it was like a, their beer right and i think I, it was 20, no alcohol, 22 dollars no alcohol just no alcohol yeah i'm like i'm gonna just get like my count 12 <laughs> right, no shit. and actually relax how much for a regular yeah. beer guys get a beer. Yeah. <laughs> they do have coffee though too yeah I, but I, they shame you when you order it over I, I, I was gonna say i really <laughs> don't think they do Cheapest thing on the menu, you you're asshole. Gonna, you're gonna drink that plant. I, I went there and <laughs> I was you're like, "You're gonna drink that plant, not our plant." Yeah, so I actually went there just for coffee, and I was like, "Yeah, let me get the cappuccino." And she's like, "Really?" She just didn't want to make it. I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, get the machine out. He's here." <laughs> she's like, "Sick. Well, you gotta try this. This kava. It's like energy, but it's like a more clean energy, and it lasts longer." So I was like, "All right, man. Whatever. Just give it." She to me. have dreadlocks and a nose piercing. And- <laughs> No, I just showed a shirt on. It sounds like that's what the, the, the last time I was there. I had like four of their energy drinks, right? Yeah, and I went to bed right after. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Yeah, no, I don't think we're gonna have that on the show. But thank you. <laughs> you just talked him out of it. You so just fast. talked me out of it. I was all in until you're like, it just doesn't work, <laughs> and it's really expensive. Well, we'll bring you there. See if it works for you. Yeah, yeah, my work. It's, it's, it's not gonna work for me. I think it'll work for you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> i'll tell you what they're oh, great so. sales men or women or they're i mean they're women over there but they're great sales women they are like, they, they, they sell you yeah mm. they sell you on the whole idea they sell you powders they sell you you know look up with a handful of stuff well listen any t- any <laughs> what did you bring home i don't know honey but the lady said it would work <laughs> but anytime i'm in a situation like that you know where i have a pretty woman trying to Convince me oh, to get I'm something. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, very I'm gonna, girls. I'm gonna feel. You. I'm gonna feel relaxed. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's going. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, You'll exactly. Be fine. Oh, yeah. I feel so much better. Wow, it is working. <laughs> it is working. I haven't even taken a sip yet. She, one, one of them I'm told relaxed, me. I'm relaxed, but part of me's not. One of them told me. She's like, "Yeah, I'll find you a house to buy. Like it'll be good, nice deal, this and that." And then, boom, relax. Right, right She's afterwards. a realtor too. <laughs> she is one of them. Is oh, not, oh, she has to have a real job still. Yeah, Kava just doesn't pay the bills. All right, what's that? What's that thing doing? That's for our microphones. Uh, so that that's the soundboard, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. a smaller soundboard. Very condensed, yeah. You, yeah, you, you can we, adjust the gain, which I think mine probably needs to be low, lowered a little bit. Oh, it got buttons. We have a couple of buttons we never use. Oh. And then when we do use I them. I love the buttons. Well, we always yeah. get them wrong anytime we try to use it because we don't use it in so long. Oh. Can yeah, you program you them with buttons. different sounds? You can, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the best part. Yeah, we really need like a label, a labeler. Yeah. Somebody yeah. says something stupid on the show, I have it and I'll put it in and I play it all the time. Yeah, you guys love your buttons. I love the buttons. Mikey does too, as long as he's not on them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a rule. I can't put him on the buttons. They always put Phil on the buttons. Yeah, we just we, what we were talking about is trying to have like a saying that we say and then put it on the button. Yeah. But you can never like I co- I'm trying to come up with a sound or yeah. not a sound, but a sign off thing. Yeah. For six years now. I can't come up with anything. So it's just bye. Pretty oh, much. Yeah. We just ended up making our own intro and outro and then plugging that in. Yeah, we have that too. We have a video yeah. and uh, audio intro outro. Doesn't work so good on the uh, audio because it, you can't see it. It's just really just music. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't see the people doing stuff. We paid a guy to do like a voiceover for us. Oh. It was like 10 bucks though. Oh. Well, all our animated graphics, we use Fiverr. Oh, yeah, yeah. 10 to $25. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty five is where I draw the line. Like, any more than that, I can do it myself. Yeah, yeah. If it, was, if it costs more than lunch. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We should redo our voiceovers with, like, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. We had Arnold on Thank uh, you two for weeks ago. In. I saw that, yeah. He oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He called in. I he saw called that. In. It was really him. He's making a cigar with Espinosa cigars. Is he? Allegedly. That'd be exciting. 
He's not really. We had a. We had I was going to say that. Espinoza has a guy that years ago used to do the video game voice for Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he works for them. He's a salesman out west. So Jack uh, Duranio brought him over during the PCA and introduced to us. He goes, "You guys got to hear him talk." And he goes, "Do the thing. Do the thing." <laughs> and he did. He did the voice. It sounds, I'll be back. It sounds just like him. Oh, that's well, hilarious. he didn't say that. And I go, "Well, you got to say I'll be back." And he goes, "Okay." And then he said. <laughs> That's so funny. Not even the impersonators when I say that one. They're like, oh, right. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. Everybody asked me to say that. I would say that anytime I'm leaving a situation. <laughs> Just like, like, right. Anytime you leave the room. Yeah, yeah. Where are you going? I'll be back. <laughs> like, well, he's fuck like, oh, you, Joe. Oh. Kind of this. And he's a, uh, uh, he's a Hispanic Samoan looking guy, so the voice does not fit at all. <laughs> <laughs> he's got long hair, a big beard. It doesn't fit at all, but he's a great guy. That's awesome. So when they when they supposed to hire somebody new, first thing they ask Jack goes, "What voice does he do?" <laughs> what celebrity are we having on this week? What celebrity do we have on this week, Jack? Yeah, we're looking for celebrities too. Are you? Real ones though. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe fake ones to like get the you know get the ball rolling. But the ball. Hey, rolling. Arnold was just on that show. Exactly. We'll, we'll just put you know the caps or the uh, the title of it would be like Arnold Schwarzenegger question mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did. Oh, oh really? Because <laughs> you can't really say it's him. Yeah, you can't. No, yeah, you can't actually say it. Yeah. Did you guys end up going to PCA? We did not. No, I didn't think so. I didn't see you. No, yeah, we, you were say, there was no, some We sort. were there. We saw you. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We had that, we had that kava drink at the bar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. See, it I worked. Just, I just remember. don't remember. I don't remember. Just cleaned my head right out. No, uh, you could have got a couple celebrities there. Could have got interviews and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We we. Mike Tyson all, was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes, but you could not get close to him. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Our decision was uh, this coming year. I, yeah, that was our final decision, for sure. No excuses. Uh, yeah. You know why they? You know why Gurkha's using Mike Tyson? Why? How many listeners do we have here? How many uh, am I gonna give a rumor out? Uh, the <laughs> owner, the owner of the company just came back, and he had to leave because it was allegations he was a racist. Oh, uh, we, yeah, 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 yeah. we talked about that. At one point. Yeah. So what's the best way to get over the news if everybody thinks you're a racist? <laughs> I feel like it, there you go. I mean, I don't know. Personally, allegedly, allegedly, I was, was it, say allegedly. Was it really big mouth. news though? Because I didn't hear about it until like someone told me. They didn't want anybody to know. Okay. Because the crowd was crazy, like it was. Yeah. The guy Guy Fieri was there. He he didn't have yeah. as big crowd as Tyson, but he had a big crowd. Yeah. We interviewed him. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. we did that. Uh, that was really we didn't. Uh, Chaz Palmetteri was there, but we didn't even try that. Yeah. But I don't think he had a big crowd. He showed up the last day. Oh, last okay. day, nobody's there anyway. Yeah. I think it was probably bigger last year when he did right. it. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was a bigger deal last year. I kept year. seeing his face pop up. Right. I didn't go last year. I but miss, two, I miss so that. was this year a little smaller because it was so close to each other? Or um, They say there was more people is the, is the story. Is that because they let media guys come in for free? <laughs> well, you got two guys. You get two in for free. Mm. But, oh, well, you didn't hear about all that. Oh, there was a big problem with that. So originally they said media guys can get in an hour before the show starts. Okay. And even during setup, you can get in and before. But the week prior, they sent out another email and they canceled that. Mm. But all the media guys still had the email. So, like, I was going on a media pass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I helped set up the booth, and I want to get, you know, I don't want to have to wait outside with everybody else. Yeah. So, a week before, Greg had to get me a POSHIC ID. Mm. So, I told Greg, look, I can't get in. So, if you guys want me to help, uh, get another ticket. Yeah. So, I didn't even pick up my, my media pass at all. Yeah. Because it ended up being worthless. Right. But mm. they kept all the media guys outside. They didn't let them in. And like the last day, they're like supposed period? to. Like period? Well, no, not till the show opened. Okay, gotcha. But like some gotcha. of them already had interviews scheduled and stuff. Mm. They're like, no, nah, you can't get in. Not until the, 10 o'clock or whatever it was. That's crazy. It was yeah. Yeah. That would have been us. Because we would have gone as media this year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Should have been standing outside with the rest of the monkeys out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love all you guys, though. You're all, you're all my favorite monkeys. Oh, thanks. It means a lot. I didn't count you guys. And you literally call this monkey. I'm just gonna call you Kava for now. I'm terrible with names. I give everybody nicknames. Just don't feel bad at all. What's my nickname? Alex is easy. I have a son named Alex. Oh, okay. So that was boring. Easy. Yeah, boring. So we usually call you the one Hispanic with all the Albanians. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even Albanian. He looks it though. He looks like these yeah, two he guys. Does. He looks apart for sure. You're not related to these guys. I thought you were one of the brothers. Technically. Technically? No, not technically. Not technically. Not technically, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Technically, I did not use that term right. He's the quiet one, we say. Yeah, I'm also on camera. One. If I was on camera, I'd speak more. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You were on our show. You didn't hardly talk at all. I was going to say, I feel like you speak more well, off camera. 
I feel like uh, we could turn one of these around for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, don't do that. No, Jerry's been getting better. He's he's blossoming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should go back and listen to our first show. It's terrible. First ten shows are terrible. We had Zane Emil on the very first show from Godober Morales. Uh, it's back when he was married to Emil, and she did, she was like the flash for the for the brand. And Z's English was very rough back mm. then, so it's really just her laughing for about a forty five minutes. <laughs> That's all it is. She giggles. She has the most infectious laugh, and she's just laughing and smiling through the whole thing. Because she thinks I'm hilarious, so I would say something, she would laugh, so then it just makes me say something else, and she laughs again. <laughs> so then you were trying to get her to laugh the whole time. Right, exactly. Right, Mikey's yelling at me to stop, and Z's saying something, but we can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> we had him in our show, and we could understand him, so it's got He's a lot better now. Yeah, he yeah, is yeah. a lot better now. He's a super cool guy. Yeah, he's super he is. Nice. He's very nice. Very nice man. A lot nicer than any of us. That's for sure. <laughs> Me included, so I wasn't just isolating you guys. So, real quick before we wrap it up, back to cigars. Been an hour already? How much time we had there? Yeah, what is it at? An hour and 17. Holy oh, cow. Oh, 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 it's a two-parter. <laughs> now nah, we'll leave it all in. We did a two-parter once, and we were like, ah, we should have just left it. Do you have Skip on? We did a four-parter one time. Damn. Couldn't get him to stop talking. We're going to have someone on, I'll tell you after. Okay. That we, we know it's going to be. It'll be a long one? It's probably going to be long, yeah. Gotcha. But, um, so what are your, besides the BDP, which is uh, really good, by the way. You guys are enjoying it? Oh, yeah. I'm uh, I love it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, what are your, like, three go-to cigars? Let's, uh, let's say nothing from Palestania, nothing from you guys. Okay. Because that's yeah, a given. No, no, no Besa. No Besa. No Besa. <laughs> that was going to be it. The new Besa 1 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That, um, honorable mention the Besa. Go to. Uh, I like the Espinosa stuff. Uh, the crema is really good. Uh, if I want some stronger, I go to the Murcielago. Uh, all the Roma Craft are good. All that new stuff. The new Pennsylvania Cro-Mag is really good. Uh, I don't smoke a lot of Fuente. I don't smoke a lot of Padron. A lot of boutique stuff. Yeah, it's mostly boutique stuff. Uh, a lot, a lot of Matt Booth stuff. A lot of his stuff. Uh, Howard G makes a good cigar. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, has he been on the show? He had. To he has been on the show. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's got too. quite a few now. Yeah. I love his regular Maduro. That's like actually one of my favorites from him. Right. I love that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm trying to think of something new that we've gotten recently that's really good. Uh, yeah, you guys in the shop, you got, you got a few like random ones in there that aren't really popular well sometimes they're doing somebody a favor or yeah. sometimes they're you know they've heard something's going to be really good and they want to get behind it for a while so like we had patina from mo for a long time but it just didn't take off mm. it just didn't i mean that happens sometimes uh, the two new tabernacles are good those are good the ones that uh, nick malilo came out with at the show the foundation cigars the new tabernacles. Well, he nay. I don't know if it's tabernacle, but uh, the one that was called the Wise Men. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah he okay. reissued that with a different blend and a different name at a different factory. That one was really good. Not a whole lot. Um, Dunbarton. Oh yeah, yeah make yeah. some good stuff. You that new bronze back is good. I had that yesterday. That uh, Wagasaki or Wagashi, whatever the 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 dojo, yeah. the, green, the green brulee. That was surprised. That was really good too. I just sort of associate the dojo stuff with gimmicky, you know, cigar. All the dojo guys buy all the dojo cigars. Yeah. And you can normally only get them from Abe down at Smoke Inn, so. I said nothing else coming to mind. It's still, okay. for, still that base that I smoked list. yesterday, so. You know, <laughs> <laughs> sort of clouded my judgment. With yeah, you lit, that, you lit that up first thing in the morning. Yeah, I wanted to do it on Fresh Palette the next day after you gave it to me. Because who knows what I've smoked during the day. Because if a rep leaves something, I'll smoke it. I yeah. don't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would you, what'd you what? think of strength-wise? Uh, light to medium? Really? Yeah. That new one? Yeah. You're crazy. Why? You think it's stronger? I do. Oh. I smoke strong shit all day long, though. That's probably it, yeah. yeah. I'm more well, I'm more mild to medium generally. Okay. So you give me something that's... Something you know, a little higher, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll light a Neanderthal first thing in the morning. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah. Won't even think You're twice. that kind of guy, yeah. yeah. We have a lot of guys on the show that are like, yeah, I got the, the Camacho Triple Maduro first thing in the morning. I'm like, okay, guy, yeah, like... Right. <laughs> yeah, right, calm down. Something gave me a headache. Oh, the Empire Cigar. The, the new one from Cordova Morales. Oh, yeah. I that gave me that. a headache. Really? Just a little bit towards the end. Hmm. Like, because it was too strong? Or I don't just... know. Uh, it, it didn't. I mean, he said it was a full-bodied cigar, medium hmm. to full. I don't, I, I don't know why. It was just weird, you know? So I had a little uh, 
Greg came up with this great idea. We we're going to start baking cookies in the shop every morning, so the shop smelled like cookies. <laughs> well, it didn't take off. Nobody made the cookies, so we have a bucket of cookie dough in they the fridge. They wanted you to make the cookies too. Well, they wanted Steve. <laughs> yeah, probably. Want to be? I'm going to be the official baker now too. Probably just add it to the list. Uh, so I grabbed a little scoop of the cookie dough and ate it, and the headache went right away. So I don't get uh, nice. I don't get tobacco sick much at all. Okay, so yeah. it's kind of weird. Yeah, his uh, Nico Reaper did that for me. Oh yeah. yeah, that was a strong one. He got in trouble with that because of the cigar boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's telling yeah. us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The coffin shape. Yeah, that all the Harrow cigars hard to keep lit. Is it really? Yeah. I had no trouble. Oh, I had two but of you, them. You think you would, right? Like you know, it's not a, it's not known for a quick burning tobacco. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of darker shade cigars like that, you run into an issue sometimes of the the wrapper just won't stay. Right. Yeah, lit. it just won't stay ignited. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't have an issue with that one. I don't know if you did. I don't. It's been a while now. Yeah. But it's really, it's actually really good for an all hero cigar, which you don't come across ever. No, it's no, it good. was a good cigar. Uh, he said Friday night he might be coming back out with it. Oh, like officially come out? Yeah, yeah I'd come out again, change the box, and come out again because a lot of people were asking. Yeah. yeah. They wore, the, they would, wore those yeah. shirts and they had little shirts he gave away when he came out with it the first time. Yeah. Now, I figured he'd bring it back, just change the box, I guess. Yeah, something. Like a, you know, a coffin instead of, what is a coffin, like eight sides or something? I don't even know. You can't call it a coffin, I guess. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. A burial box. Stupid tatouage. <laughs> All right, what else? Yeah. What else we got, guys? What do you guys got uh, coming up? You got an event anywhere soon? I feel like I'm doing my own show. We're doing... Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're doing... Um, uh, we got to schedule our cutting lights for the new one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I mean, it basically came out like literally last week. So... Yeah, we're going to start shipping this week, and then we'll probably have uh, an event in Michigan at Don Cristo Cigars over there, because uh, they sell a lot of our cigars. Probably do one at Celery City, I think. Then we're going to try to, yeah. Yeah, Blend and Barrel, maybe. There was a lot going on in the shop when you were in the other day, because Greg asked me today, he goes, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg goes, did he drop off a new cigar? <laughs> I, like, I was yeah. Gonna, I was going to follow up with he saw them, me yeah. smoking, and he's like, that new one? I go, yeah, he brought you, you had one yesterday, he goes... I'm so sorry. He goes, there was so much going on. It felt terrible. But so yeah, you ended up not having it? I don't know if he had it or not, or it's yeah. on his desk somewhere. I don't Probably, know. If yeah. it's on his desk, I'll find yeah. it, and I'll smoke it. Yeah, so. I'll text him. <laughs> yeah, so just we, we're just basically... see him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're um, basically getting them into the... You know, our, our guys already have basic... Right, uh, right, right. ...schedule events with them. And then, you know, because pretty much like February... March and April, we had a lot of events. Right, yeah, you guys. you guys were always moving. Yeah, so we got a little break end of April, and then we're gonna get back into it May, June. You know, schedule you guys, schedule whoever else. Right. Some shops take longer than others. Uh, you guys are pretty good, except you were just booked so far out. But yeah, it was only like um, a, it was only like a two month waiting period. We're booked now. I know in May, and I think June, but I don't think we started scheduling yet for July. Yeah. Greg's good about now including me on his calendar so I can start planning and oh, okay, graphics cool, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's one thing if you're booked, but some places are like, yeah, we do like one a month. And it's like... We're trying to come up with more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we do one major event, and then we do a cut and light, and then now we have a beer tasting tomorrow night, hmm. which will be after this is already played. Uh, for $9, you get to come in and uh, minimum... I'm trying to remember. I think it's minimum of six beers. Everybody gets a two-ounce pour. We sell more than six tickets. We start adding beers. Okay. So, like, if we sell 10 tickets, there's 10 beers you get to taste. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, that's something you're going to do regularly, though? Uh, it's going to be, like, the, f well, what is this, the first Thursday of every month. Okay. If it takes off, it does well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something we're trying. Yeah, you're always trying something. Yeah. We've done trivia nights. Worked for a while, but then the kids that ran it quit. So, then nobody else knew how to run the equipment or how to do the website or whatever. So, that went away. Uh, we tried a Latin night because we have Edka. But apparently, we don't have a big Latin card clientele, just her, so that didn't work out. We had DJ Chet, but now he's out at Hefe all the time. So, Yeah, he's there like almost every Friday. He's Saturday. there regular Friday, Saturday night yeah. guy now. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. one of the first to try the new base, actually, just because he happened to be there. Oh, was he? Yeah, I was over there in the Daytona area, so I stopped by. Oh, at Hefe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. He used to be a, a, a fairly famous DJ back in the uh, like uh, the nineties. Oh, really? Up in up in Michigan. Oh, and then he you know got married, had a baby, got out of it, and 
So now he's just getting back into it. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was wondering where that came from because it seemed kind of random, but I guess that was like his thing yeah. in the past. Yeah. Yeah, Mike and Mike Productions got into it with him in the beginning, but it just didn't take off fast enough. So we just said, look, you guys just take it and do what you want with it. We've got too much other stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you always want to do a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, you got to pick and choose what's right, actually Right, you working. run out of days. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Right. But yeah, final thoughts? Anything? No, I'm glad I finally made it over here. Thanks, Absolutely, guys, yeah. To your luxurious studio. It's nice. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Nice. Almost as nice it's as yours. It's his house. <laughs> We're saying thank you, but it's your house. No, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can still be the studio in your house. Uh, it's attached. Right, it's attached. Separate building. Well, yeah, I appreciate you for coming on and sharing with us the BDP oh, cigar. Glad you guys liked it. It is a very good you cigar. You all know I had my dick in your mouth, just so you know. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, that's not what it's called. No. Unbelievable. Well, it's what it's called, but that's not what it means. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Yeah. All right. Bye. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short-form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.